Hey everyone, welcome back to Continuous Thunder. I uh, feel like I'm not going to be making too many friends on this one again, but just remember this is all just my opinion, okay? This is all just coming from me. Anyway, we're talking about the new album from AJR called Neo Theater, out now on AJR Productions. AJR is an alternative pop group, almost electro-pop, that consists of the brothers Adam, Jack, and Ryan Met. Their sound is almost cinematic and it's characterized by sampling uh, brass and orchestral music to create their instrumental tracks. They've been around for a while but their rise to stardom started a couple years ago with their album The Click, specifically their single Sober Up that featured Rivers Cuomo of Weezer. This album, Neo Theater, is their third album and they are really leaning into that cinematic sound. And there's even passages on here on the first and final tracks that sound like recorded show tunes, like from a musical, but they were uh, samples that were created specifically for this. Now, I'm gonna put it right out there, um, kind of like with my last review, that I was not a big fan of this. I actually didn't like it much at all. But I am going to try to say something nice about it first. And what I have to say nice about this is some of the instrumentals that these guys put together are amazing. I know um, brass and orchestration is popping up in alternative pop music every now and then here and there. Uh, I know Panic at the Disco is using it now and everything, but I don't know if anyone is quite using it to the degree of AJR and using it as creatively. Some tracks that are really strong instrumentally uh, include Next Up Forever, the album opener. After the show tune-esque sample is done, it goes into a very um, hard-hitting banger of a song. Uh, the second track, uh, Birthday Party, has a really clever clarinet loop in it. Um, other tracks like even the main single 100 Bad Days the lead single off this album has a really good backing track and actually has a really awesome beat switch around the bridge and the song Beats coincidentally has one of the most interesting beats on the entire album unfortunately pretty much all of these songs that I mentioned that have good instrumentals are cut down with bad lyrics and either it's through the entire song or they each have like one line that is just so bad that it brings everything else down. And the lyrics are pretty much my biggest complaint on this whole album. This band can't seem to say what they want to say without being cheesy. And the first track, Next Up Forever, has the line, I kind of wish I was still a virgin, time to finally see what sex is like, or birthday party, which is told from the perspective of like a newborn and i get the message that they're trying to get like with the uh wide-eyed wonder at the world and thinking that everything's going to turn out great and everything but the whole perspective is kind of cheesy but it also has this one line in one of the verses i bet this instagram's a load of fun it's best to show the best of everyone i bet it never bites us in the bum even the lead single, 100 Bad Days, the very first verse is kind of clunky with its wording. And then the song, Don't Throw Out My Legos. Yes, that is actually the title of this song. While, like I said before, I kind of get the message that they're trying to say here, but they just can't find an elegant way to say it. It's about not wanting to grow up, not wanting to move on. You know, he's moving out, but he's telling his parents, don't throw out my Legos. And I'm like, there are better ways to hint at not wanting to move on. It just seems childish, and while I know that's kind of the point, it seems to do it to an extra degree that makes selling the point harder in the long run. And the song Beats is one of the worst because it's a highly repetitive song that is talking about getting a uh, product endorsement to help pay for their recording costs, specifically Beats by Dre, if they could pay 20k for us to say that they are great. Perhaps the worst offender for me in the lyrics department is the song Dear Winter, which is written as like a letter to the singer's unborn son. And not only is the son unborn, but he's not even conceived. And that's clear because, yeah, this starts out as a letter to uh, his kid, but he ends up turning it back around to be about himself being forever alone. He says lines, it doesn't seem like there's 
anybody out there for me or he keeps going back to I have to find your mom first and it just kind of undermines the sweet message that he's trying to give to his son and then there are a couple songs where the lyrics aren't bad in fact there's one where the lyrics are actually really good and that's turning out part two a continuation to the song turning out from an earlier album it's a song where the singer who is not the typical lead vocalist of this group talks about a relationship that went sour and he's being confessional and admitting that I probably never even loved you. I said it because you said it first. I said it because I didn't want to hurt. It was, you know, this knee jerk reaction that he did. He kind of jumped into something and he's just kind of having this realization, this very sad realization that, uh, he probably really didn't love this person that he, put a lot of time and effort into and actually said that he loved and led them to believe that he really did. And it's a super sad and super relatable and one of the strongest lyrical songs on the album. But then they have to go and undercut the uh, tone of this whole song with this really cheesy pitched up vocal line right before the bridge or the outro of the song. And then another song that actually has decent lyrics but for some reason it's just not vibing with me as the song Break My Face. And this song lyrically throws off a lot of 21 Pilots vibes. And I'll even admit that if 21 Pilots did this song, I'd probably like it more. But that's just because the AGR flavor of this song just really isn't doing it. I don't know what the difference is. It's really kind of hard for me to pinpoint. I don't know if it's because 21 Pilots did it first. I don't know if it's because even though 21 Pilots, especially like on their Vessel album, that's kind of what I'm comparing this to, even though their tracks were upbeat and kind of happy and poppy, there was still some level of darkness or something sinister in the instrumentals of a 21 Pilots song. And that's just not here on AJR. I think it also might have to do with the vocal delivery. AJR is much smoother, much cleaner. There's not, you know, any vocal breakup. There's no chance that he's going to go into screaming or break into rapping or anything like that. I feel like the whole package of 21 Pilots, if they were to do this, would make it more enjoyable for me. But when AJR does it, just because of their brand of the alternative pop and the way that it's delivered and packaged, it makes this song kind of cringy, actually. And then there's the songs that aren't specifically weakened by particular vocal lines or lyrics or any poor choices in the instrumentals, but they're just not fantastic in any way at all. They're very generic and easily forgettable. Songs like uh, The Entertainment's Here and even parts of the finale, it's just like, okay, that's a generic pop song. Overall, I feel this album is really no greater than like a one and a half out of five. Um, I really feel like there's a lot of missed potential on this. All of the instrumental highlights on this album can't save it from bad lyrics and other issues like bad compositional choices. It's a shame because I feel like this group has a lot to say. They can be very relatable. They just can't seem to find a way to say it without being cheesy. It's interesting that one of the last lines on this album is, we can't wait to see what you do next. And I won't say I can't wait, but I'm definitely interested. I mean, I feel like there, like I said, there's a lot of potential here and it just kind of got wasted and weighed down by some bad decisions. And I want to see if this, group can pull themselves up and actually turn into a more interesting group. But that's going to do it for this edition of Continuous Thunder. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, now I'd like to know your thoughts. Did you listen to this album? Did you like it? Did I get it right? Did I get it wrong? Go ahead and leave all those thoughts down in the comments below. You can also leave suggestions for the next thing that I should review. A quick reminder that you can follow this channel on Twitter at CT Music Review. That link will be down in the description. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.